Well, it's the deadliest of all gynecological cancers. It's often referred to as the silent killer or even the disease that whispers. That's because the symptoms of ovarian cancer can be vague, easily confused by other conditions or completely missed altogether. Dr. Pramod Srivastava is the director of the NEAG Comprehensive Cancer Center at UConn Health. He joins me now this morning. Good morning to you and thank you for coming in. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. And the reason we're squeezing this in before it's October is because September is actually Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. So, of course, it's always a good time to talk about this, but we wanted to at least address it uh, in this month that we're putting a lot of attention on it. Why is this such a silent killer? Because its symptoms are very nonspecific, uh, bloating, back pain, uh, uh, general abdominal discomfort. Which sounds like, uh, you know, a, a, a menstrual uh, cycle for a woman. I mean, that's so just so typical. That is why it's a silent killer, because it has no specific symptom, and there is no screening test. Um, that is why it's a silent killer, and that's why it's such a big unmet need. And it sort of is a bit disconcerting as a woman to hear that because, you know, even those of us who really take care of our health, yeah. we could be doing as much as we could possibly, as, as much as we could do to be, do, be preventative, but at the same time we could get this and have this and not know until it's progressed. Well, most women present with an advanced disease, and that's why it's such an important unmet medical need. And that's why it's such, a, such a need to find a treatment for this that is, a, that is satisfactory and non-toxic. And that is something that you have been working on. In fact, uh, I want to hear more about the clinical trial that you've been working on that actually some of our viewers could potentially become part of. What exactly are you working on right now? So we have now been doing the work to develop this clinical trial where we'll be making a vaccine for each patient individually. So, so custom-made for their particular custom made. So version of this, yeah. Comes in, uh, has surgery, has chemotherapy, and is free of disease at this point, uh, but normally would recur with disease in about two years' time or less. So during this time when the patient is free of disease, we will take the patient's blood and take the patient's uh, tumor. We will sequence the entire DNA of both of these and compare them and see what is different in the cancer from the normal. And based on those differences, which are unique for each patient, we'll make a vaccine for each patient. It sounds very hopeful and very promising. This will be the first step in testing something like this. This has never been done before. And uh, the goal here would be, in this trial, of course, to test its safety and feasibility, mm -hmm. but eventually to prevent recurrence. Um, so so this should be, this, sh this, is, a, this is hoped to be a, a, a non-toxic um, um, vaccine and should be highly effective but we'll find out yeah we certainly uh, will and you know how can viewers if they do feel like wait a minute I, I feel that category uh, and, and might be able to help with this clinical trial um, what what would they be in for what what should they know about getting into something like this so firstly uh, they'll have to be referred by their physician okay and they'll come to us we'll evaluate if they're actually eligible for the study or not right and if they're eligible then basically uh, Basically, we would uh, draw blood from them anyway, we'll have the cancer from them anyway, and we'll make this vaccine, and they will have to come in once a month for getting an injection in an outpatient setting. Wow, and so not on. terribly invasive no. at all, and, no, and certainly all. very, like I said, very hopeful. Uh, you know, there's going to be a re research supporting the trial. It's going to be published in a journal coming up. Which journal is that, if people want to read more the about journal this? Of, uh, of, uh, um, Experimental medicine. Experimental medicine, medicine okay, yeah, yeah. And it has, uh, it's coming out in about a week or two weeks' time. Okay, well, exciting. Yeah. And uh, research to date, I mean, the cure rate, you know, is this, is this potentially high? Is this something that, you know, looks fairly promising? So we haven't, we haven't tried to cure tumors as, mm -hmm. as such, but all the studies that lead to this have been very, very promising. And those results are published in this paper that's coming out. All now. right, it sounds like a must read, certainly for women, uh, you know, who are, again, taking care of their health. And, and this is the month to do it. We still have some time before October's here. So um, for more information on this clinical trial, we're going to send a phone, phone number your way. You can take a look there on your screen. Yukon Health Center, it's 860-679-6571. You can get more information there. And thank you, doctor, so much for coming in and sharing that well, information. Thank you very much. Thank All you. right.